you look back over the past 80 years of the habitat works that the citizens have put on the landscape in key spots so that elk and other uh, wildlife that use that uh, continue to benefit. It is amazing. You have to follow, in some sense, the migration to kind of really put together the puzzle of how these herds are, are doing and how they're changing. And so I think about that stuff a lot in my work, so pretty cool to, to get out with people that are, that are actually executing on that, that kind of uh, thinking day to day in their work and be a part of that. Yeah. Here comes a few more. The amount of forage that's out here. Oh yeah. It's just off the charts. Plenty to eat. Yeah. That makes a total of ten. There's a Eleven. There's a bull. Yes. Yeah. I can see him standing there. Can you tell what he is, Blake? Yeah, he's on five by five. Five by five? Yeah. yeah. He went behind the tree now. Here he comes. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, he's, he's wider. I was raised in the state of Missouri, right in the center of the state, and just grew up in the out of doors. Yeah, he's a big body bull. That's pretty special. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, a lot of elk there. Today, as I look at the career uh, that I've had with the Missouri Department of Conservation, spent over 25 years in the State Fish and Wildlife Agency, and now with Bass Pro Shops, I consider it a, a true privilege to have spent time uh, just helping citizens better appreciate the resources that are on the landscape. Currently serving as a, a director of conservation for Bass Pro Shops, we do work actively with the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. Bass Pro Shops is proud to partner with the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, and it's one of the best NGO conservation programs that are out there based on reputation as well as accomplishments, are making a difference on many, many levels. It's a good start to build from. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hopes are high. It's just, I mean, having the elk that close. Yeah. Those encounters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's spectacular. It sounds like there's still one out here, but. Try this guy here. Let's do it. Kind of exciting this morning. It's cool. See a bunch of elk right off the bat. At least three bulls in there. Yeah, it was fun to hear them bugle. They cover the ground quick. They do. Yeah. We can hear the bugles right now. I know in Missouri. One bugling over here. That sound yeah. was off our landscape for 150 years. Isn't that amazing? Now yeah. It's, it's now back. it's back. Yeah. Uh, when you 
think back about the, just a little after the turn of the century. In the state of Missouri, we had less than 2,000 deer. Uh, wild turkey were rarely seen. And animals like black bear and elk were gone from the landscape. Their habitat was severely degraded. And in recent years, Missouri has been able to move forward on some restoration programs. Yeah, as we look at the reintroduction of elk into the state of Missouri, it was a multi-year effort. Uh, I became actively engaged uh, late in 2009. Early 2010, we began to uh, visit with the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. Along the way, we needed to find a host state. Where would the elk come from? The state of Kentucky, another restoration uh, program out east, was selected. We worked with the state of Kentucky, their staff. First elk were trapped in the state of Kentucky in the winter of 2011. The animals were put through an intensive health protocol, both in the state of Kentucky and the state of Missouri. An important part of Missouri's program was a research effort. All the released elk had GPS collars placed on them so we could determine home range, habitat use, what areas would they use for calving and why. When they were released on the landscape, it was a soft release. Uh, the gates in the pen were open and the elk were just allowed to walk out at their own pace. Because as we look to move forward on restoration efforts, we're in it not just to bring the animals back, but to make sure we put them on the landscape that has the habitat, the public support, and the research efforts going so we'll have long-term success. Missouri continues to have one of the best research programs in the nation. We continue to learn information that will allow that agency uh, to manage the elk successfully for our citizens. Missouri citizens should value and feel good about the elk restoration program. This is the worst thing that happens to us this morning. It's been a great morning. Let's try it. Oh, it turned over there. There you go. We're good. Is that a bugle? Yeah, right back here. Got the tree out of the way, but while we were uh, standing here working on it, there's bugling all around us. So what's our plan here? Let's just head up. There's some clearings up this way. We'll get up right with them, and we'll kind of follow them into the timber a little bit, see Did how close it? we can get. Yep. Went again. Yeah, there's two or three of them, I yeah. think going on There's up there. There's some little openings as we go into timber here. We can work them and kind of see if we can get on them. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. Well, I think we have a pretty good chance here to see these bulls. Let's try. All right, let's go. Sounds good. That one looked different, just crossed. Uh, the G2s were missing on both sides, and that's a genetic characteristic they're working to remove. It started the hunt of the detour bull. Oftentimes people may ask, you know, what's the importance of conservation? And they miss the true meaning. And as I th have thought about that over the past couple days, uh, chasing elk, more than once I've thought about Theodore Roosevelt and, and his campaign and, and the other hunters and anglers that joined him. It was a quality of life. 
they could see that if this nation didn't change its course, we we're gonna lose on so many fronts. So when I think about conservation, of course, conservation is wise use, whether it's the forest resource or the fish and the wildlife, but we need to think bigger and we need to think broader because whether you're a hunter or an angler, whether you use public land or you may never find yourself on public land, for this country, those are important building blocks. Congratulations. Appreciate nice it. Thank job. you. Nice job. Appreciate it. Yeah. Well, he, we saw him up there and he turned to look away and he raised his head. And you could just see the I, G1s. The G2s were gone. Okay. And so yeah, you knew. So we knew it was the same one. Yeah, exactly. It was just from Pat. Um, great work from him this morning. Yeah. Beautiful day. The yeah. bull we had right in our lap this morning. Yes. Yeah. And to be able to come out and pull it together. Did you see all the elk? I saw them just still standing there, quite a few of them. Yeah. But. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, awesome. What a day. He's a dandy. Mm. Yeah. Great day. Majestic animal. Not only do we need large landscape scale areas for animals like elk, we need landowner support working to make sure the habitat quality is there. Congratulations. Great day. Yeah, awesome day. Beautiful elk country. And all along the way, keeping oh, yeah. the public engaged so they have a vested interest as well in the success. mostly in the Northern Rockies and the greater Yellowstone ecosystem for about 10 years. And really over the years on a range of different questions about the ecology and the behavior of elk, uh, ranging from predator prey interactions, influences of you know recovering wolf populations, habitat influences to um, these large scale migrations across the landscape. That's the kind of bull we're trying to grow. Yeah. But uh, let's just east down in here. There's a pretty good little park. And we'll just have to watch the wind, but hopefully we'll get some. They're still feeding. It seems everything's moving in early, you know, this morning. But we may get some stragglers. at the elk herds that spend their summer inside Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks. Depending on which herd, these migrations look almost like spokes on a wheel reaching out into the surrounding landscape. The scale is just stunning. Just the sheer vastness of, of those public lands minimization of impediments to animal movements is why we still have this kind of 
natural wonder or, or national treasure of, of that intact system of migrations. These animals are pretty faithful to the areas they use throughout the year to say, gosh, you know, we can be much more targeted now in identifying which ha lands, which habitats within those lands. We might really want to prioritize some of our, um, whether it be easements or habitat, you know, acquisitions or where should we, where could we target with limited resources, you know, where can we have the biggest impact. The reason migration is so important is because it generates abundance. These animals get good food and refuge, you know, across a big landscape. They can be productive and they can be abundant. What I've seen and felt from the landowners that I've worked with is, is, a, is a great deal of engagement. In some cases, they've even um, been partners along with RMEF in funding some of the collaring, you know, of elk to document these movements uh, on their ranches. and. The landowners appreciate and, and, and have been responsive to is just appreciation for the role that they play. It's just, hey, you know, you're doing a lot for, for this, uh, this species, for these migrations, for this ecosystem. Thank you. There's a wind just swirling. Maybe we can move over the top. And Still got some light. Pretty uh, good chance that if we didn't have the, the just the vastness of public lands that have been conserved through history, we wouldn't have a lot of those migrations intact today. You know, a place like Yellowstone, even at two million acres, uh, to have the elk it has needs 20 million acres you know, surrounding it to make it work. The story translates almost anywhere. There's elk, um, they need space. They see us, there's a, no, this other little herd may jump the fence, they might come right up on us. If you feel good, take that one that you're on that's to the right. My legs are shaking. I didn't that's all right, you made, straight. you made a good shot. You got meat for the freezer. A nice, healthy cow. I'm still taking it in here. Uh, yeah, um, my knees are still shaking a little bit. <laughs> but, yeah, wow, it's, it's awesome. And we didn't end up finding a management bull, harvested a cow. That's also part of the ranch's management program. Just making sure that the herd here is in balance with the available forage. If you don't have ways of bringing people together, we're going to see slow declines of these movements and these populations over time. And we need to prevent that. And that means teamwork and partnership for the benefit of these herds and the people that enjoy them. 